If you want to become a cloud or a cloud security engineer or make your life easy as a cloud security engineer or an architect, then you need to know these three tools. Most importantly, if you're working in cloud these days, everyone is using a free or a paid version of CSPM, CWPP or CNAP. As a bonus towards the end, I'll also share some upcoming keywords as well. So that at least you know what tools you should look out for. Now, before I go into this, I just want to make sure they understand that CSPM, CNAP and CWPP, all these three tools are only relevant if you currently operate in a cloud environment, like a public cloud environment, like Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. If you're not in those cloud environments, you probably don't have to deal with this tool. But if you're a cloud security engineer, more likely you are working in a public cloud. So that's why you're watching this video. First one being CSPM or Cloud Security Posture Manager. I'm gonna give you a simple definition and a technical definition. So the simple definition first, imagine if you had a mansion for whatever reason, you're super rich. I'm really rich. And you wanna go on a weekend away, but how do you know that if the front door of your huge mansion has been left open? How do you know that? But if that was a fully automated mansion and you could basically log into a website and find out if the front door was open and you can automatically close it, that would be pretty cool, right? So that's kind of what CSPM provides to most of the cloud providers out there. Now, if you're a bit more advanced and you just want the technical version of what is a CSPM, so a Cloud Security Posture Manager is a SaaS software that uses APIs to help security manage the security posture of their cloud environment. Now, best way to explain this is if there's a drift from say best practice or from an industry perspective or best practice from just your company policy or company security policy perspective, a CSPM tool can help you monitor and manage these alerts as well. The reason a CSPM tool is important because at any given point in time, if there is an intruder in your environment or if there is a resource that has been left exposed to the internet and potentially hackable by the hackers or bad hackers out there, you probably wanna know about it. That's the value that a CSPM can provide for your environment. Now, if you're wondering how does a CSPM work, how does it work? Imagine you have your property that you rent out at the moment. You're renting there and every now and then there's an inspection person who comes in and inspects for the property for the landlord. Now, if you're someone like me, you try and make sure your house is clean before the landlord inspection person comes in. <laughs> we go back and report to the landlord how clean your house is or are there any windows that are open or cracked or whatever. So CSPM is pretty much like the your inspector or an auditor version for your cloud environment that's constantly auditing your entire cloud environment to see are there any resources that are currently exploitable through the internet so you can prevent yourself from being, I guess, potentially compromised by an external bad hacker. Or if there's already an incident in play, you're able to respond to it effectively. That's the value of a CSPM. Now, another question which is quite common is that do I need a CSPM? As I mentioned earlier, if you have a very small footprint cloud, you've just started, probably only have like, you know, just one resource that you're using in a cloud environment, you probably don't need a CSPM. That's a bit of an overkill. But if you were a large environment and you had lots of cloud services, lots of servers that are running in the cloud, then you probably want to look at CSPM. But if you have a lot of servers, you probably want to look at CWPP as well, which is our next tool. So CWPP or Cloud Workload Protection Platform, I'm going to give you again a simple Simple version or technical version. A simple version is, remember how I said, if your business is a house or a building, which is built on the foundation of a cloud, so you basically build this entire ginormous great product on the foundations of a cloud environment like an Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. Now, if you're with me in that analogy, a CWPP is like a defense mechanism for the house. Basically, every house has a lot of appliances, and if there's a faulty appliance, this is the defense mechanism that kicks in and cuts the power when someone tries to turn that on. The technical version of cloud workload protection platform, they could be a software which could be an agent version or an agentless version running on the servers that you have on your client environment and they monitor it for any malicious activity, IDS, IPS, basically looking at is there anything malicious happening that I should be reporting back to the mothership and letting the security team know that, hey, you need to work on this because there's potentially a virus in a server and we've cut the power for it. Now, you may also wonder now, hey, Ashish, do you have CWPP, CSPM? Do I need both? The way I would explain this is, as I said, if the business is a house and the foundation is the cloud, CSPM is a house alarm, which lets you know there's an intruder in the house. And CWPP is basically keeping an eye on all the appliances you have in the house, making sure that if there's a faulty appliance, which is basically gonna infect or maybe even burn the house, it basically cuts the power for it. So if you're confused about whether you need a CSPM or a CWPP, you need a CSPM only if you have a large cloud environment where you say you don't you have more than one resource in the cloud and you're trying to manage it. If it's a small team or you even have a large team, but they just like the amount of resources that you have in the cloud are way too large. So the simplest way to put it, 
if you have to water one plant, probably you don't need like an automatic hose. But if you have to water an entire garden, you probably want to think about an automated way of doing it, right? You don't want to be just standing there watering the garden the entire day. So from that perspective, CSPM is something of value for sure. Now, CWPP, if you are using servers in your environment, then you should definitely consider having some kind of a protection from CWPP because these are agents or agentless versions that are running that keep an eye on the appliances or servers in your case, which are running in the cloud environment. I did promise the technical and simple versions. So I have a simple version, the technical version for whether you need a CSPM or a CWPP. You need a CSPM if you want to be alerted on any resources that are currently exploitable by a bad hacker or they are just basically vulnerable. You need a CWPP if you're using servers because CSPM works on, hey, looks at the architecture from outside. A CWPP looks at each of the appliances that are inside your house to see, especially if it's a server. Should this be looked at a bit more closer? So that's where the difference is. Now, the third one, probably the most important one as well that most of the people in the world are talking about is something called CNAP or Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. But for that, I need an outfit change. So let's do that. All right, let's talk about CNAP. Now, most companies these days might either use a CSPM, CWPP or both. However, for companies that have been working in cloud for a long time, they already have those two versions, but they are more cloud native. By, by that, what I mean is their environment are a lot more complex than just having servers or just looking at house alarm. They need something like a CWPP++ or a CSPM++, if that was actually a thing. By the++, what I mean is they need tools that can look at, say, complex environments which may have Kubernetes computer uh, there as well. They also may need tools which are able to do entitlement verification. Whether Ashish has more permission than say Matt over here or Matt has less permission than Ashish. Why is that? Things like that are some of the things that people would worry about. Now, one more thing people worry about is something called infrastructure as code. If I were to call code a Gartner report, CNAP is an integrated set of security and compliance capability designed to help secure and protect cloud native applications across development and production. That's a technical version for you. Essentially what they're trying to say from a technical perspective is CNAP is a SaaS software that not only does CSPM, CWPP, but it also looks at things like managing your entitlement. It also looks at infrastructure code scanning. It also looks at Kubernetes environments you have. Basically, it's trying to expand on anything which is cloud native that is being used in your environment. Again, the question is, well, I have CSPM, I have CWPP, do I need CNAP as well? I have a pen, I have an apple. Technically, you probably don't need to start with CNAP in the first go, you can start with CSPM if you're just basically a small cloud footprint and you're not using any servers, you can only have to deal with a CSPM. Say for example, if you have servers in your cloud environment then you need a CSTWPP as well. You probably don't need a CNAP at that point in time because if you don't have Kubernetes and if you're not using infrastructure as code, then probably it's just an overkill. However, if you are a mature organization and you probably have servers, Kubernetes and all kinds of cloud native stuff happening probably need something more mature like a CNAP or you could be working towards a more mature environment where you have infrastructure as code, you have Kubernetes being used for cloud native and a lot more cloud native capabilities, then you probably need a CNAP at that point in time. Now this is the bonus round, the extra tool that I wanted to share with, which is getting a lot of hype and you probably would find it in an organization somewhere. It's called CIEM or Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management. Again, if the company is being built as a house and on the foundation of cloud, then everyone who has access to the house is basically an, called an identity. Now you can have a large family or you could have basically services like, I don't know, some people have postal services that can come in and deliver the mail right inside the house. So these are just services that you have given access to. So managing who in the family or your friends have access to the house. <laughs> or the company's product, or even what services, which may be external services that you don't really deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but they come in here and there and do their job and walk away. Maybe a gardener, because you're rich enough to have a gardener, I guess. But it's things like that is what gets really complex in the cloud world, where if your product is so large that you have a lot of identities or a lot of users that have access to the organization, then even if one of them gets compromised and you don't know about it, how do you know if Ashish was an overprivileged, as in, I had way too permission that I was supposed to have and I was silly enough to lose my password. A hacker or a bad hacker gets access to it. They log into the environment and you never find out just because there wasn't a review or an audit done on the kind of permissions every user or every service in the organization has. This is what a CIEM can help you with. It can help you manage the permissions of identities of the services that are running and users that can access the product that you're running on the cloud. Now, I do want to give you two commonly used terms as well, which I've been using all throughout the video. And I think 
be really valuable if you're trying to be an awesome cloud security engineer or an architect. Oh, uh, really? Now, the first one being cloud workload. Cloud workload is the engine that is running your product. Basically, if your product requires a server or some kind of compute, as it's called technically, then that particular server is called the workload. Now, you can have many servers and that's collectively, you can still call them a cloud workload, but that's pretty much what people mean when they say cloud workload. Another term that you would hear quite often is infrastructure as code. Again, I'm going to go back to the house analogy. If your business was a house that is built on the foundation, which is called cloud in this case, which is Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, Google, whoever, in that case, infrastructure as code is the building specification that has been used to build the house. That makes sense. So you know how when you start, if you were to ever try and build a house, you probably have to look for an architect who's going to build the house. So as a cloud security architect, you would be defining what specification would you have as a organization for building a product. And that specification can be automated using a something called infrastructure as code. Again, if you have one plant to water, it's easy to just you know, do it manually. But if you have multiple plants, you probably want to find an automated way. Infrastructure as code is the answer where you define what the building specification would be. And what that allows you to do is you can just basically create multiple versions of your house as a software. That's why it's called infrastructure as a code. Now, these are the current cloud security tools that are in the space. And I'm sure there's a lot more to come in the, as we kind of go year by year. One thing that I want you to take away if, if you're going to use these tools is that there is an overwhelming response from people that sometimes the alerts that are raised by these uh, tools can be quite overwhelming. So something called a context is required for the alerts that are being raised. That's going to be saved for another video. But if you want me to create a video about alert fatigue on how to do monitoring in cloud better, or you just want me to give you more terminologies and services that are used in cloud so you can become a better cloud security engineer or better cloud security architect or transition into that role, definitely leave that as a comment. And if you are a cloud security professional or about to be one, you should definitely check out the full length interview we have done with cloud security professionals from around the world for over three years. And we still live stream every week to with cloud security experts who share cloud security knowledge. So make sure you check out those playlists. Otherwise, YouTube thinks these are the videos you would like, so you should definitely check them out. I will see you in the next video. But before you go, don't forget to like the video and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.